to all the students and educators of Vermont, I am so glad I have this opportunity to speak to you today because it gives me a chance to tell you something I've wanted to say for a while. You guys are amazing. I have met many of you in person when I visited your school or library during the last year or so. I have met more of you over the internet this spring after we switched to remote learning. I have always admired the passion and dedication of Vermont students and teachers, but never more than this year. You guys have faced a trial that I couldn't even have imagined when I was a student your age, and you have done so with courage, creativity, and grace. Every time I got on Zoom to speak with you this spring, I was awestruck all over again by how you have faced and overcome so many challenges, ranging from questionable internet and annoying siblings to being separated from your friends and teachers. And not only did you overcome these challenges, you kept reading. You kept reading and thinking about what you read. So congratulations, pat yourselves on the back. You and your teachers, librarians and administrators are all heroes. So I'm not from Vermont originally. I grew up in Texas, but from my very first visit to the state over 10 years ago, Vermont has felt like home. And you guys make me so, so, so proud to call myself a Vermonter today. One thing I especially love about Vermont is the fall. Where I grew up, it never gets cold and the leaves don't change color. So every year when the heat breaks, and the maple trees turn red, it always feels like magic. When I started writing Small Spaces, one of my goals was to capture everything that I love about fall in Vermont. I wanted it all in there. The cozy parts like wood stoves and cider, the beautiful parts like autumn sun and changing leaves, and the creepy parts, which for me are scarecrows, corn mazes, cold rain, and being lost in fog. I don't know if I captured all of it, but Small Spaces is certainly my love letter to my adopted state, and I hope that in reading it, you fell a little bit in love all over again with everything that makes this place so special. Small Spaces is a scary book because when I was your age, I loved scary books. I loved that shivery feeling of reading under the covers at night, almost too scared to turn off the light and go to sleep. But reading a scary book is a bit different today, isn't it? because the world sometimes seems so scary. I mean, what are, what are scarecrows compared to a virus? What's the point of shivering over the adventures of Ollie, Coco, and Brian when real life offers so much to worry about? The answer, I think, is true, not just for scary stories, but for all stories. Stories tell us that the night ends, that friendship is stronger than fear, that eventually you get out of the forest that tomorrow comes after today, that nothing ever stays the same, that courage counts, that the path can surprise you, and monsters can be beaten. That is true in books, and it is true in life. So be brave, make jokes, be kind to those annoying siblings, read stories and tell stories. I can't wait to tell and read stories together in person again. Until then, be well.